Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's beautiful where I'm at, and we are ready to jump into today's show. If this is your first time joining, welcome. Be sure to check the link in the comments later. Check with ed.com. That's where you'll want to start your journey if you haven't already. Over there, you can find my email list, which you want to get on, especially before tomorrow, because tomorrow I send out my weekly recap. And basically, it's just a weekly email that gives you kind of a summary of the episodes that we've had throughout the week and some extra tips and things like that. Welcome, Nikki. Uh, also, if you are curious about Hey Ed or you're like, I don't even know what Hey Ed is, it's the place to be. If you're an entrepreneur, soon to be entrepreneur, small business owner, it doesn't matter. Like, that's the place that you need to be. So, check that out. Pricing is going up soon on that, but it's a membership community where you get uh, tips, tools, resources, tutorials. Uh, pretty much personal uh, attention for the most part in there. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we have a good time. Uh, and a few of you guys here uh, are regulars and you know, cause you're in the group. Uh, so you're in the community. I don't know why I don't really call it a group. I call it a community. So uh, welcome to those who are tuning in. So if you have questions, feel free to ask anybody here in the comments, ask me. Uh, I will review a couple things that came up because I know some people are kind of on the fence about Hey Ed and they're curious. So I'll, I'll recap a couple questions that have come up. Um, not going to give you the answers though. No, that's part of the membership, but I am going to give you some insight uh, of what kind of questions come up just to kind of give you an idea. Hopefully that helps. So feel free to share this out, tag your friends. At the very least, what you want to do is make sure that you comment. That's right. Comment. Even if you're watching the replay, it doesn't matter. I still want to hear from you. So does everyone else in the comments. Hey, Erica. Hey, Paula. Welcome. Happy Thursday, you guys. Love it. So today we're going to talk about are you asking your clients this? And some of you might be like, well, Ed, I don't even have clients yet. That's okay. That's okay. This is still, hey, Jennifer, welcome. This is still going to apply to you because this is something that you need to implement when you do have clients. So, um, and this is going to be great. I love this uh, with the group tuning in right now. And so glad to have Erica back. So we're just going to say that. Everyone's happy about that. Uh, Erica says, I haven't even had the chance to comment on the haircut yet. <laughs> I know. You like that? You like that, guys? Ooh. I had to. I had to go super short. Uh, fun fact. By the way, for those who are new, this is a business talk show. We talk about business tech and the user experience. But because it's a talk show and because it's me, you're going to get a whole lot more. So just be prepared. Uh, but yes, I had to go shorter uh, on the sides there, Erica, because... The person who cuts my hair, she's going to be gone for a month and, you know, I'm trying to give me that extra grace period because you know, you guys, this is business, right? Let's talk about that for a second. You know that when you find somebody that you like working with, whether they cut your hair, they give you a massage, they do your nails, they are your personal trainer, they're your business coach, they're your mentor, whatever, whoever that person is to you, tell me, even if you're watching the replay. It doesn't matter what the cost is once you have made that connection with them. You make that connection and you guys you guys can vibe out and work together well, you, done, right? How many of you guys, raise your hand, tell me in the comments, even if you're watching the replay, how many of you can agree? I will tell you right now that when you find somebody who can cut your hair, and I don't have a whole lot, but it can get crazy. And I used to actually cut, fun fact, I used to cut my hair all the time. I used to just buzz cut it long, long time ago, like years and years ago. But then when I started working with one of my clients, they uh, had a fashion business and we just, you know, was living the New York lifestyle and everything. So I, I grew it out and stuff. So since then I haven't buzzed it. But when you find somebody who can cut your hair just right, you know that you're a loyal customer. Am I right? Tell me. I know a lot of you guys, a lot of you ladies out there can agree. Gents, I'm sure you can agree too. Uh, if you're not doing the buzz cut, because when we have buzz cuts, we don't care. It's like, whatever, just do it. But when you have actual hair, you're like, that needs to be cut right. Otherwise, it's going to drive you crazy. Can you guys all agree? Uh, I'm just going to catch up on the comments real quick. Say hello for everyone. Hey, Whitney, welcome, welcome. Mickey, perfect. Erica, um, yep. You get, get that exactly. Jennifer says, yes, I thought I would go to a new person for my hair because they did a good job on my daughter's hair. Now I'm not going back. See, you guys, business right there. That is what happens. I will tell you, again, this is a side story, but this could be part of random news. Why not? Um, and so when it comes to uh, this situation here, so I used to go to Great Clips, you know, because I was like, whatever, you know, like cheap haircut, 10 bucks, we're good. Like, why am I spending more when I could just get it cheaper? 
and I did find a really good hairstylist there. But then she left. And so then I went back to try one of the other ones that had been there for years, you know, thinking, okay, they got years of experience, no problem. Listen. I gave them too, too many times. How does that work? I gave them too, too many chances. Because I gave them twice. Did you get that? And I was like, done. I was so pissed, you guys, each time. Because, you know, I thought the first time, okay, I'll, I'll give them a break. Maybe, maybe not, you know, like, I'll just give them a break. And then I think I went back the second time and I was like, I'm done. I'm done. And then luckily I found somebody else and I'm like attached to them like glue. Like, you're going to be gone for a month? Okay, how about we go a little shorter on the sides, a little shorter on top, and hopefully, you know, that gives me a little extra time to stretch it out until you get back. But don't leave me. You better come back. So that that's just how we get, right? Same thing with the personal trainer. Some of you guys know I'm working with a personal trainer. And I, I'm i now attached at the hip. I'm like, cool, when are we working out again? It's that connection. It's that, that community, right? If we talk about Hey Ed for a second, some of you guys uh, can relate. It's the same thing when we talk about community, whether it's free or paid. When you find the right people that you mix well with that are providing value for you, you're going to be there. You're going to show up. That's why people in Hey Ed get crazy and freak out when they miss a day because they're like, wait, what happened? What, catch me up. I don't want to miss a second. I'm not even kidding you guys. This is what happens. And so it's one of those things that when you get that momentum, when you get that going, you know that you're doing the right thing. You know that you are in the right space with the right people and that you're just going to keep it moving. Like that, that's what you got to do and keep that connection. And that's what you need to be doing when you show up, deliver, and engage with your audience, both online and offline. I'm just going to take, uh, Jennifer says, yeah, fool me once. Exactly. Mickey says, I am a super loyal customer, but if they mess up a few times, I don't go, uh, I don't go away mad, but I do go away. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing. And for those who are curious, um, a couple of the questions, cause I know some of you have asked, you know, Ed, can you kind of share some of the things that people ask? So I'll just give you kind of a real quick recap and then we'll go into more of the random news here because I don't want to make it like all about sale, sale, sale here. I'm just trying to help you guys for some of you who are on the fence just to let you know. So a couple questions that came up in Hey Ed this week were um, how do you uh, use Vimeo and what connection can you make with that to your website and Facebook Live videos? Like basically how do you connect the dots between Facebook Live, Vimeo, and your website and making it all work and talk to each other? So we had that. Um, what's coming up is a Canva training, a training on Canva from one of our experts. So I'm super excited about that. We're going to have, uh, more things like that inside the community where we have experts, both community members, as well as those outside the community that will be, um, starting up here in June. Uh, and then, um, how to repurpose your Facebook lives and then how to update your website with new, uh, posts or a page by yourself without having to go hire your developer or a developer. So those were a couple of the questions that came up. Hey, Whit, welcome. Uh, so just to give you guys insight, I'll, I'll try to do that every so often because I know uh, that has been asked of me from some of you. So there's that. Now, let's get into more random news. Uh, how many of you guys have seen or um, have bought Crocs? You know, like the shoes, Crocs? Does anybody even know what Crocs is? Let me just ask that, I guess, first, even if you're watching the replay. Crocs. Do you know what they are? Have you ever bought them? I'm just curious. I'm going to take a sip of water. Did you guys notice I didn't have water yesterday and it was downstairs and I was like, after the show, I was running down. I was like, I'm so thirsty. So I'm going to have a sip of water. Mickey says, and when we're running late into Hey Ed, we're like, Blah, 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 blah. running exactly uh erica says what crazy person asked about vimeo because <laughs> that was that was a fun one no it's good i'm glad that you asked that because it's a great question uh mickey says hey wit awesome paul says nope uh jennifer says i know what they are but don't own any okay cool so and where is jess hoffman i know she loves a, a good croc story um so i am going to share my screen with you guys well uh, before i do that let me just even ask even if you don't know what Crocs are, would you think of paying $600 for just some rubber shoes? I'm just going to say rubber shoes. I don't really know if they're rubber, but we're going to go with rubber. Would you pay 600 bucks for some rubber shoes that had some really cool artwork on it? 
let me know, even if you're watching the replay. Uh, Mickey says, I bought Crocs once in my life when I was in Spain, and my cute shoes <laughs> hurt on the cobblestone streets. Yeah, and Crocs are, I mean, I'm not a Croc expert. Surprise, surprise. Sorry, I'm not adding that to my list. But um, from what I've seen, they're not the most stylish in terms of, you know, like when you get your when you get your new Nikes or whatever, you're like, oh, hey, these are super clean. But you know what? While we're talking about them, while we're talking about them, it takes a while for me to get new shoes. I, I really, like, the outsides will still look nice, but the insides are so worn out, you know, and where you don't have the cushion anymore and stuff. And so it takes me a while to get new shoes. And then when I get new shoes, it takes me a while before I actually wear them consistently and break them in. Do you guys do that too? Is that just me? Is, or do you guys do that too? Is that kind of weird? So I got new shoes probably a week or two ago. Bum, bum, bum. Look at that. Super clean, right? Super clean. I'm like, yeah. So when you put them on, you're always feeling like the baller. You walk up into any room and you're just like, what's happening? How you doing? Uh-huh. Yeah. What's going down? Right? But I'm not so sure that you would have that same thing when you wear your Crocs. No offense if you wear Crocs and you like Crocs. No offense. Maybe you do. We all are different, right? But these Crocs might change your mind. I don't know about for $600, but they may make you want to holla. Get it? How I did that? <laughs> so let's take a look. For 600 bucks, you could have these... Crocs, the art edition. Now I will say, these are super cool if you were just going to have them on display somewhere. I mean, I don't know how you would actually be able to walk with these if the bridge doesn't separate in the middle. That would be, uh, and then what kind of statement are you making when the bridge is separated because you're walking in them? You know what I'm saying? Like, and then I would be afraid that things would get caught and you know, like this would get stuck on something. I don't know. I don't know. I think this is a great art piece. And heck, it's probably a good deal if you're really into art and you wanted to be like super unique and have, and you really loved Crocs. I mean, that could be cool. But, um, you know, I, I like the artwork. I think the art's cool. And of course, it's New York. So, I mean, hello, I'm an East Coaster at heart. So, yes, I'm going to love this. Uh, but no, I'm not going to pay $600 for a pair of Crocs. Um, I wouldn't even pay $600 for regular nice dress shoes, you guys. <laughs> uh, Mickey says, as the Bible says, a fool and his money are soon parted. <laughs> well, there you go. There's the part right there. And then there's the C in the middle. Uh, must have been written about those Crocs. And then look, look. So here's a deal, you guys. You have 600 on top. Or for those who want to be a little bit cheap and more on the affordable side, we can only spend $140 and we get our Crocs and our socks. Ooh, Crocs and our socks, Crocs and our socks, Crocs and our socks. Are they clean? I don't know. There, you know, you guys, you rarely ever get me to rap. So I don't know. Maybe it was the Brooklyn mixed with, with the Crocs and the socks. Like we're just going to wrap it out this, this time. But uh, I don't know. You know, these ones aren't as appealing. So I, I'm going to pass on these ones. But it's there. Erica says, you're a country boy at heart. Don't lie. <laughs> I will say I do like space. I do like having more than a one bedroom slash studio apartment with everything in the closet. Um, that's a little too tight, especially with two big old dogs. Uh, so I do like my, my country lifestyle. But I love the city vibe, that energy, that... You can find all these cool places. You can do so much. It's just the pocketbook doesn't like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I still got to go visit Erica down in San Francisco and say hello and, and have her show me around because it's been a while since I've been down there. But, yeah. <laughs> Whitney says, absolutely not. Stop it, Ed. Stop it. What was the – oh, it's it's a different rap song I was thinking about. But, you know, I you guys may – who, again, going back to one of our episodes earlier this week, we're just a one post away from going viral. Who knows? The Crocs in your socks. Those, that could go viral. Crocs in my socks. Crocs in my socks. What? 
I don't know. You guys have to come up with the rest of the lyrics, and then we can all like split the the popularity uh, of the viral video. How about that? How about that? Catch me outside. How about that? I don't know. I don't know. See, this is what you get. You just never know. So um, that was random part of the random news. <laughs> Erica's all. I'm unavailable. <laughs> she. I can just see everyone. All all of the numbers start going down now. Everyone's like, "Oh, we thought you were cool, Ed. Peace." But I'm back, and there's a slow, there's a little slowness on my computer, so there you go. Uh, anyway, aren't we having fun today? So another thing I wanted to bring up, though, in random news before we talk about today's topic, uh, which is, are you asking your clients this? Even if you don't have clients yet, you should still pay attention and share with your friends. Uh, but uh, because of the, well, let me just start with, Twitter is closing some accounts. Do you guys hear about this? You guys, have you guys had this experience yet? Because you might have, depending on when you signed up for Twitter. I should say, depending on what age you signed up for Twitter. If you even have a Twitter account. How many of you, even if you're watching the replay, have Twitter? Let me know in the comments. Uh, Erica says, man, I miss busting your chops. I need to quit missing shows. I know, Erica. See what, see what happens? See what happens? So, yes, I have a Twitter. Uh, I couldn't tell you when I signed up for it, but I will tell you that it was a above the legal age, <laughs> and if you're curious what the quote legal age is, uh, 13. So for Twitter, so here's an interesting thing, and this is this is a thing that goes to their business policies, right? Is that when you sign up for Twitter, they don't ask you for your birthday, but they do require that you be 13 years or older to sign up. So you're kind of thinking, when you think about your systems and processes, right, you're kind of thinking about, okay, well, if it's required that I'm 13 or older, wouldn't it be smart to add the birthday field? That way I can check things. You know, like that that's what you want to think about when you start having for your intake forms, for your contracts, whatever you're building out. Think about those things that you make a requirement. Is there a follow-up post or, or uh, field that should follow that that closely relates? In this case, a birthday field. So that's kind of Twitter's bad for not including that. Uh, but they have been shutting down apparently a lot of accounts. Like, you're just done. Because, can you guess? It was something that just came out. You may or may not, most likely may not have set up yet the new policies for this. I'm kind of hinting at it because I'm trying to see if you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, we covered it here on the show last week. It went into effect, I think last Friday. Yeah, last Friday. And you all should have this on your website. You picking it up yet, even replay viewers? Uh, do I have to give you guys everything? Everything? Really? That's right. GDPR. That's what we're talking about. So, if you don't know what that is, uh, let me pop into the comments this link for later. You guys can take a look at this blog post. It is a previous episode for... Uh, talk about GDPR slash email marketing because we actually had a surprise guest come on the show who was a total expert around email marketing and shared email tips that you don't hear from those in the industry. So that was super exciting. And then there's also steps for how you can start getting your stuff in order for G GDPR, including a template if you need to purchase one, not through me, but I have an affiliate link through a lawyer that I've worked with and that I'm using on my sites. And then if you do need help with getting that edited and implemented onto your uh, WordPress website, let me know. There's a spot on there to reach out. I do offer that as a service now to help you guys get that set up. So there's that in the comments for you later. Don't worry about it now. Perfect, Paula. Yes, exactly. GDPR. We need to come up with a wrap around that. Uh, so with Twitter, what's happening is they're closing accounts where even if the person is over 13 now, let's say you signed up at age 12, but you're like 40 
they're still going to shut down. Well, they still may shut down your account. Why? Because according to their records, somehow, which I still didn't get that part, but somehow they, they know that you signed up under the age of 13. So in that case, they're going to shut your account down because of the new GDPR rules that went into effect for um, the, the UE. Excuse me. Um, so I'm just reading this article right now. Um, but it's interesting because unlike Facebook and other social platforms that do require your, your actual birthday, Twitter doesn't. They just require users share. Um, oh wait, Twitter doesn't require users to share their birthday when they sign up. Uh, but you just have to say that you're over 13. So I don't really know because it doesn't say here how they actually find out if you're not 13. Yeah, Erica, it's crazy, right? So we're already starting to see one week later almost the effects of the GDPR in full motion on a high level with Twitter. So you may be like, well, I, you know, I just have a few people on my email list or I, I'm just starting out. And No, you need to get everything in order. You need to do this. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, if you have MailChimp as well, part of that service that I was mentioning that I'm offering for getting you up and running with your GD, GDPR is also including going into MailChimp, getting the whole template set up for you so then you can just review and then send it off to your list. So that's also included. If you have WordPress and MailChimp, I got you. Uh, so think about this. Understand that it's a real thing and that this is going to affect everyone and it's going to affect big businesses and it's going to affect small businesses. And the reason why you need to make sure that you have it in place is because you don't know who is signing up for your email list or who is buying from you. And you don't know if they're here, there, or where. So it's just best to have that in place and just get it all set up. And if you don't have a privacy policy, that's where that template comes in on that blog post where it has the privacy policy plus the GDPR info. So you're all set. It, it's all there. And then that way you're also have a privacy policy in place on your website for those who don't have it or haven't updated in a long time. So it's all right there. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you can reference that blog post later, but it's a real thing. People are getting affected by it and it's only been uh, out for, I mean, a week tomorrow. So just keep that in mind and really make sure that you are doing your best to keep things up. Uh, Mickey says, yes, Ed Troxel got my company's whole GDPR life together. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Helped out Mickey and a few of you guys. Uh, it's been awesome and it's fun and it, it pretty darn quick too, right? And it saves you trouble too. So um, thanks for that shout out, Mickey. Uh, but yeah, so don't, don't mess around with that because it is a real thing and it's going to be affecting you at some point and you might as well just get it checked off your list now because why wait? Why wait? Plus, you're going to forget because when summer summer's here, kids are getting out of school, graduations are happening this week and next week, and you're going to be like, wait, what? Now i got to deal with that again? No, just get it checked off your list, you guys. Make note after this to go figure out if you need it or not, and then just be done with it. So then you're good. Um, so let's jump into uh, today's uh, topic, which is really just a conversation piece about uh, are you doing this with, are you asking this with your clients? Do you ask your clients this, I should say? Uh, and so the question that comes up a lot, well, there's several questions that you can ask your clients. But the reason I ask, sorry, it's like spinning five feet ahead and I got to pull it back. Uh -huh. So the reason I brought this topic up is because I was watching uh, Fixer Upper last night. Anybody watch Fixer Upper on HGTV? I don't really have uh, cable because I just stream things online, but I was able to, um, I was bored and there's nothing on Netflix, so I found a Fixer Upper episode, and it was kind of one of those moments, you guys get this, where you're like, ah, I'm not really into this right now, but I guess I'll watch it, and then you start watching just a few seconds, and you're like, idea, boop, 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 boop. and then you start putting things in, and you're like, oh, I know why I was supposed to watch this. Now, I didn't finish the episode. But for those few seconds that I watched it, I was like, yes, that is tomorrow's topic. Because I watched it yesterday. So that, that's tomorrow's topic right there. And you guys probably want to know what it is, right? You want to know? Replay the viewers, you want to know? Well, let me, let me give you a little background first before we get to the question. 
So on Fixer Upper, and I don't remember their names, but it's a husband and wife, uh, they normally show homes to a couple who's looking for a Fixer Upper, a, a house that they can fix up. And it's usually like the trashiest home in the neighborhood or whatever. So normally they are choosing the homes to take the clients to. But this time it was flipped. They had a couple, a husband and wife, who were taking them to a couple of their locations, the, the locations that they found, to see which one was their best option. Which I think that's a cool idea, to have a nice little spin on the show, right? Because most of the time, if the show is the same way, like me, on this show, where I'm mostly talking, I love when I get you guys as guests on the show, which we have a few coming up here in the coming weeks, which I'm excited. If you want to become a guest, it's free to do. It's just go to checkwithed.com, click on End Talk TV, and there'll be a guest request form. But um, what's cool about this is that they had the show flipped around a little bit. So instead of them taking people, the people were taking them, which I like that idea. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I stop, keep watching. And they go up to the first house, and they're on the outside. You know, it's a beautiful house and landscaping and stuff like that. And they're on the outside. Of course, they're going to go up into the house and look at it. And if you've never seen the show, they go into the house, and, and they basically look at it, and, and they say, okay, well, we're, we're going to put a wall here, we're going to extend the countertops, we're going to do this and that, and then there's kind of like this blueprint almost, a digital blueprint that shows up on the screen and kind of maps things out so you can kind of see an outline. Super cool and interesting. Well, what was really awesome, and this is when you know, like this is when it stands out, you guys, when you do something like this. So before they even went up the stairs to get into the house, the wife of the the host um well they're both the hosts so the wife um went to the looked at the clients and asked them she said um something to the effect of what do you love about this house before we even go in do you get do you see why that's important we're standing visualize this we are all standing together i'll pretend like i'm the host you guys are the clients you're showing me this house. We're outside. And before we go in, I stop and I say, what do you love about this house? What caught your attention? Erica, Whitney, Mickey, Paula, seeing who else I, I can see, Whit, uh, you know, who, who, whoever else is watching on the replay. You and me, we're standing outside the house one of three dream homes that you're trying to remodel or fix up a little bit. We're standing outside and I turn to you and I say, what do you love about this house before we go even go inside? Oh, Chip and Joanna. Thank you, Erica. Yeah, so Joanna. Joanna is the wife uh, of the host. Well, they're both hosts. I don't even know how to say that, but you get what I'm saying. Chip and Joanna. Thank you. So why do you think that's important? Why, why did I want to talk about that today? And why is it important for you, whether you have clients yet or not, whether you have clients already or you're working on getting clients, why is that important to know? What do you love about this before we even get in? It's because you're trying to get a sense of what they're attracted to, what their taste is like. We're on the outside. Right? You and me, we're on the outside of the house. I can see, just for myself, why you chose the house. It's got a nice yard. It's got some nice brick. It's really cool entryway. It's got nice stairs. They're not too high. Um, there's not too many of them. You know, I can see all that. But I'm going to ask you first, before I even open up my mouth to say all of that, and before I start giving you all the ideas, I'm going to ask you first, what do you love about this house? What is it that caught your attention? And that's when you tell me, oh, well, you know, I love the windows. They're, it's really bright. It's, it's got this nice bush here that kind of gives you some privacy so people can't just be peeking in so we don't get any peeping toms, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
Uh, let me just catch the comments. Er, uh, Mickey says, it's like a market survey to find out what clients want. Exactly, Mickey, exactly. Erica says, helps to get a clear picture of your client's needs. Yes, love that, you guys. Wit, I think it's good to know what they want, uh, what they like, need to help get them to their desired results. Exactly, you guys nailed it. That's what you need to be doing. You know, on most of my, um, I think on all my intake forms, actually, they the, the main question that I ask is, how can I help? Now, that's a general, really broad question, right? But I find, and, and those who have taken my intake, used my intake forms have found it very handy, that it allows you to just be open and just to tell me what's going on versus having very, very specific questions, which there's a time and a place for that. But most of the time, especially at the beginning, it will be, how, how can I help? Because then it allows you to just naturally be like, listen, Ed, dude, I got this phone. I don't know what to do with it. I just downloaded this program. I'm not even sure why. I just paid $500 for XYZ and I don't even know how to use it. You know, I just hired this developer to do XYZ. I don't even know how to contact that. You know, whatever. I'm just making that, that those examples up. But you know what I'm saying? Like we get into those parts where we can just freely talk. Just like when I asked you, in front of the house, what do you love about this? I didn't ask for specifics in terms of what do you specifically like about the proportion between the stairs? What do you like about the front door? Because then that, that just gives me a narrow perspective of just that piece. I want to know before I'm going in the whole picture or at least as much as I can get from you at the beginning, right? So that's what you want to start asking your clients if you haven't already. And for those who are just starting out, if you don't have clients yet, build that into your uh, forms. Build in those types of questions so that you can really get to know someone. You know, show up, deliver, and do that engagement. That's huge. And be able to be able to connect with them and get a sense of what their style is, what they're looking for. They may not know, and that's okay. But let them tell you that. That's another reason why, you know, for um, when it comes to web design, a lot of the times I'll ask people to supply up to three websites that they love going to, and sometimes even ones that they don't love, just so that way I know kind of what what's triggering them for, yes, I love it, no, I don't. And then I'll ask, too, if you have any specifics about why you love it or don't love it, let me know. And you may not know how to properly form the answer, which is okay. You just have to give an answer. I don't, I don't like the way this pop-up is. I don't like the color. I don't like the font. I have no idea about fonts, but I don't like that one. That would be me, you guys. I can't, I can't tell you. So, okay, this is going back to when I had my magazine, for those who, who have been following me. If you're new, uh, my first business was a magazine. I ran that when I was in college, um, running uh, a couple, well, working a few part-time jobs while finishing up college. And so I started my own magazine for two years called Mix It Up. You can see it on my website. Uh, but when I was doing that, I went, had to hire a designer to take what I had up here and put it on paper. You know, actually, I, I've gotten smart, you guys. I've gotten smart. I keep a copy that I can actually pull out and show you here. So when I'm coming up with all these things, like the fonts, um, the when I was coming up with the actual heading here, like now I would never do it in, I don't think I would do it in all caps because now I know better. But at the time I was like, oh, that looks cool. But coming up with this and the style and everything, the designer literally had a binder, a big binder, you guys, full of fonts. All types. I can't tell you all of them. Sans Serif, Lotto, like those are the ones I know. They might be in the same category. I don't know. But anyway, he's showing me all these fonts and he's like, well, which ones do you like? And you know, for the most part, I can be like, ah, nah, yeah, sure. Ah, I don't know. And, but then when you finally get into the right font family, there's all these variations that I can't tell. You guys, I can't tell. He got so mad. Like, I mean, it was fine, but, you know, he'd be like, what? You don't see that this one has a slight curve compared to that one? I'm like, no, they look the same. 
you know, like, and that breaks, that broke his heart, you know, like that breaks designers' hearts or when they hear those types of things, right? But it is what it is. And so it's, it's that type of stuff where I, I couldn't tell you specifically what font goes to what family that is preferred based off of that, but I can at least give you an idea of, no, I don't like that font, the way it looks. So then you being the expert, in this case, my designer, would say, okay, let's take a look at X, Y, Z. Just like when I'm working on a website, I'd say, okay, I know not to include something like that. Or what about this? You know, things like that. So it just gives you options and it helps you. So that's what you really want to start asking your clients and future clients, if you don't have any yet, is, you know, and you don't have to phrase it in this exact way. Take this and run with it. But what do you love about this? What, what got your attention? And, you know, cater that to your product and your services and your offerings and all of that because it, it's not going to be that exact question but you get the idea that you really want to make sure that you check in with them what what attracted them and that's a, another thing too you know uh, why uh, I love reading my intake forms both for appointments and actually when you become a hey Ed member you actually fill out an intake form that allows me to kind of get a better idea of who you are what you've been up to, what programs you use, things like that. So that way, one, I get to know you a little bit better and I can kind of see where where some trainings can take place and kind of feel out what the group needs. And then also, um, it gives you, this is what I love, it gives you an opportunity to kind of do a mental note. I mean, you're kind of writing it out, so it's not really a mental note, but you know what I mean? You get to kind of take inventory of what you have. And that makes you think a little bit, which is good because most of the time we're just, we just buy and collect and we just, we're using the programs, but we may not stop and think, oh, I have X, Y, Z, and I use them for this, this, and that. And so this kind of helps. And so it's really cool. And reading them makes me, as you can see, smile every time because it's not just getting to know the programs you're using, but you guys open up, you guys open up, which is awesome. And, and, it, and, I mean, more family. So it, it really is, it's a, it's a special moment for me. So anyway, there's, there's that for you guys. I know a little, a little sappy, right? On a Thursday, but it's all good. So that's what I have for you guys today um, is really just think about your clients, your future clients, and ask them simple questions to just open up to see what caught their attention. Why were they attracted to you? You know, this is something you can even do for your email list, you guys. You can even have in your welcome series or something like that where, see, you're getting so many good things, right? Uh, where you have a, a one-question uh, survey where you ask people, what, what attracted you to me? Or why did you sign up for my email list? I'm just curious. You know, try, try, to, try to put a little personality, a little spunk into there. So then that way it's a little more fun for them to answer because then it feels like it's you actually wanting to know versus you just checking off a, a box on the list. Does that make sense? So anyway, I'm going to take another sip of water and that's what I got for you guys today. That, that's today's show. I hope that was helpful and that you learned a lot and um, we'll be back here tomorrow, same time, same place. I know Fridays are a little bit lighter for most, uh, but like I said, uh, I will be sending out the email recap tomorrow. So if you're not on the email list, go do that after this. You have some time. You have some time. Check with ed.com. It's got the email list there uh, and also information about Hey Ed. And the blog post is in the comments for those who are listening, even if you're watching the replay. Uh, the blog post to that GDPR uh, to help you get a better idea of email marketing and just what you need for privacy policy and all that, that's in the comments. And we're done. So have a great night, and I will see you guys back here, same time, same place. Until then, I'll leave you with this. Take care.